today i am going to talk about very basics but they are very important the elicitation of various signs in the pyramidal tract lesions so how do you try to elicit them the more, one of the most important test which you know is about the babinski sign or a plantar reflex sign so i'll make you do everything that you see sometime the non elicitation of the plantar reflex is that we are not doing it in a proper fashion so what should be the proper fashion and then close to that there are certain signs which are not very well recognized or very well appreciated by most of our most of us i would say uh sometimes you are not able you you feel that it is an upper motor neuron lesion but then you do not know you could don't elicit the plantar reflex so there are other methods also to elicit those reflexes Say right the most important cause of the non elicitation of the plantar reflex is that we don't do it very properly for the proper elicitation of the babinski response two things are very important one that the knee should be slightly flexed and the lateral part of the foot should be rested this is how we even elicit the ankle reflex it is not the ankle reflex i am testing i am saying that when you are testing the ankle you try to put it uh, on the lateral aspect so that part is that part you have to uh keep in mind now let us say how i am trying to do is elicitation of a plantar you start from here the lateral aspect and then the you try to give a good push press it hard and then you come to the middle part of the medial metatarsophalangeal joint so basically you are coming in the you are pressing it hard and then you are coming here up to the medial the tarso metacarpo pharyngeal joint so you are coming it here so basically here it is not being elicited normally what is going to happen is one thing very important other thing is that you should not be pin pricking it should not be a prick that you take a pin and you start doing like this you can take the keys the best thing is you can take your keys they they will not be very hard and then you can do like this start from here lateral aspect and go on to the medial aspect so this is how you do it now what is going to happen is look for the first of all you look for the extension of the big toe along with the big toe there will be fanning of the fingers this is this is not a child with a pyramidal tract lesion it is only i have kept this child just to elicit or make you elicit how you try to do the sign so that is why normally what will happen it will be a flexor two or three things which are very important here is that this child uh, up to 6 months of age the plantar is normally extensor it has been seen that even up to 12 months 75% of the time it will be an extensor response after that it becomes a flexor so you need to find out a cause so in a in a newborn or in a child who is less than 6 months of age or maybe up to infancy this could be normally an extensor so this is this one has to keep in mind now few more things which i wanted to say this is about the supposing sometimes what is happening is some children have got very hyper reactive even if you try to pick it here they they just try to retract retrace back the whole limb so what is there there are other methods to do the plantar reflex and what are those there are four things which i'll tell you four reflexes one is called oppenheims oppenheims is you can take thumb and the big toe the index finger and you try to roll it or from above downward you try to press it on the shin when you press it on the shin you look at the same way whether there is up going plantar and fanning of the all the toes so if that is there that is also taken as a positive plantar reflex so that is one open hind now you have two more the uh, three more rather the other thing is sometime if the, there is hyper reactivity 
then by the side of it, that is on the little aspect of the big toe, you try to elicit, you try to stroke it like this and then again you see the same. So that is the lateral aspect, you, that is called Chadox sign. Chadox. So Chadox, Oppenheims and now you have two more. That is called Gordon and Shuffles. So what is Gordon's? Gordon is that you press the calf muscles and when you press the calf muscle, you try to look for the signs that is whether there is the same way like a Babinski that there will be up extension of the big toe and there will be fanning of the fingers. The third one is, the last one, the fourth one is that you do the Sheffers sign. What is Sheffers? Sheffers is that you pinch it or press it hard over the Achilles tendon. So when you put it or flex it here, then there will be again the extension of the big toe and the fanning of the all the toes. So these are the four reflexes you must understand. They may ask you in the exam, Plantus is the, of course the best and you I have told you that is of course every every time you do that. But then supposing that is not elicitable, you, you are strongly feeling that this is a case of a pyramidal tract lesion and I am not trying to elicit. First of all I said how the plantar may not be available, uh, may not be elicitable, you have to keep the proper positioning. Even in spite of that, they are, these are the four other plant signs which you have to, you can elicit. Now coming, if you are suspecting, then I will make you understand, in this child only I will do it. There are two important signs in the upper limbs. I always, I, as plantar reflex you do it in the lower limbs, you in the upper limbs, you do the Hoffman's test. So what is that Hoffman? That you try to take the middle finger, fix it up here and you give a good flick here. Flick it with your and then you watch. What, you, what are you going to watch? You see this. What is happening is there is slump flexion of this and this is flexion of these, uh, these fingers. And you look at the flexion. Normally what is happening is there is a flexion or extension. Normally there is an extension. So if there is, what if I, here it is not being elicited, but supposing if you fix it up and you try to give a good flick here, normally what is going to happen is that this, there will be extension of the, this uh, thumb, thumb as well as the, index and the, there will be, there could be slight flexion here, but then there is most, mainly it will be extension of the thumb, thumb and extension of this finger. Uh, supposing it is happening the other way around. Supposing I am, I am flexing it like this, giving a good flick, and there is flexion of the thumb. If there is a flexion of the thumb, that means there is a pyramidal tract lesion, which is involving, there is a pyramidal tract lesion, especially in the upper limb, let us say, if it is a case of a cervical myelopathy, then also, or in a case of a pyramidal tract lesion of one side, in, on one side you are eliciting, on one side it is normal. That means on that very side, there is a pyramidal tract lesion. So this is called Hoffman's test. So Hoffman is very important. Other thing is the, uh, you do is the Wartenberg. That is also in the upper limbs. So what is happening is, you, karo. <coughs> Now I am going to play with him. He, 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 he. Now you are in a semi-prone position, you've done it. I have also done it in the semi-prone. I have put it here. You have to So jor lagane se kya hoga? It is of course at the same position. But what is happening? This is called Wartenberg's test. Supposing there is a pyramidal tract lesion. This will flex. You have to focus on, you have to see basically the position of the thumb. And thumb will get flexed. Like in Hoffman's, thumb gets flexed and the fingers get flexed in the pyramidal tract lesion. This is the other way of elicitation and that is called Wartenberg's test. So these two tests are basically in the upper limb, you can also test it for pyramidal tract and there are the other methods of pyramidal tract lesion which I elaborated today. That's all. For today, you can go and revise.